Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Linda Sue Plants for you. I have a few things we have to do today, and I thought I'd share them with you or bring you along. I debated whether anybody would really be interested. It's a kind of a mishmash of stuff that I have to do, but I know some of you will enjoy it, so I thought, why not? Um, to start with, we have a few things here that we have to do. This, um, <clears throat> let's get this out of the way right away. This is a candle holder that my husband found. Very neat. I love it. It's got dragonflies on it. It's really cool. Um, and I put my Marble Queen in there. <clears throat> and some of you may have seen that video. There was only a few leaves on this. And it, it was just a couple weeks ago. It wasn't, wasn't too long ago. And <clears throat> I put her in here. And she was located like right above one of my lamps. Just regular table lamps, but it's, it does have an LED light in it. And lo and behold, it started getting really good variegation, as you can see here. In addition to, it started growing like a weed. Well, I wasn't thinking when I put this in here, once it starts growing, how am I going to get it back out? And even though the door opens on it, if you can see that, um, the leaves themselves were coming out all over. And the bulk of this was all mushed up in the top here, so I thought, I kind of panicked a little. I thought, oh, i got to get that out of there. And I didn't want to empty this. So I really had to do some searching in my brain as to what can I put in there where it just won't matter. And I toyed around with a few different things. I thought maybe my uh, um, uh, string of pearls, but then I thought no because I won't be able to, because those really stick together. So when I go to take it out, it would be a, a huge mess. Um, and I had a couple other things go through my mind, but I thought, no. But I finally came up with a plan. I have my little Ruby Cascade here. And she is not hard to untangle. She's She gets tangled and it takes a little patience, but she's very um, cooperative, should I say? <laughs> she's easy, okay? She's easy to take care of. She's easy to untangle. And she's a beautiful little dainty plant and you all know I love those so I thought well why not put some cuttings I don't want to take her out of here yet I my husband brought this home too it was a another find and I love the way she looks in here I think it's just perfect perfect match whoops there goes a piece so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple cuttings from this and stick them in the pot in here. And I do have two more cuttings behind me that I have to grab before I do that, but that's what I'm going to do. So, now the other problem I have here is this pot barely fits in here, and it's got a little lip inside that I have to go over. So, this way I guess I can get it out. <coughs> But I'm gonna. I tried to put her inside of this when this was in in here, and it was a pretty tight foot fit. So we're gonna do it this way. And like I said, I think. Um, it it just crossed my mind, and the reason I hesitated here is I wonder if I should put a smaller pot inside of this one. And I think I might do that because she really does, she likes to be pot bound. She doesn't like to be in a big pot full of soil with no air, no no purpose. She, she, she didn't really start growing profusely for me until she got pot bound. So let me see. 
I have a little pot here. Yeah. Let's do that. We don't even need this big of a pot. Oh. Yeah, I think I'll do that. She's cute, right? That works. I can always up pot her into the next one if I need to. Okay. Let's do that instead. Alright. And all we have to do here is um, stick a hole down in the soil and set her in there. And again, my soil is really dry. I probably should have wet this before I did this video. I am very leery about keeping wet soil laying around the house. Um, as most of you know. I'm pretty sure most of my plant friends are probably out and about today. Today is Labor Day. Lots going on by us. We've got parades and fireworks and all kinds of stuff. People out at the beach and on the lakes and enjoying the weather. And it's beautiful here today. Hum humidity jumped back up a little bit, but the dew point is still, well, it was very low the last time I looked. Um, and that's really what makes it uncomfortable. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't pay attention to, I shouldn't say a lot, but some. And some people don't realize that you can have a low humidity and a high dew point and it's going to feel like it's 100% humidity. I learned that many years ago from our our local weather guy. Okay. And he explained it. But, you know, it was so long ago, I can't really remember what the explanation was. It was something to the effect of the humidity... Humidity measures the molecules that have the potential for holding moisture, but the dew point is actual moisture. Please don't quote me and don't get mad at me if I got that wrong, but that is how I remember it. I could be wrong. could be wrong on that. Well, I think I'm going to leave this because it looks like it's rooting up here. and We can always cut this later. All right, so I've got a few pieces here. And I've got two behind me that are rooting in water. And I think I'm going to just leave the rest of the... Maybe I'll cut this one off. This is awfully long. And where I have this, it's not, it's not real good... It's not a real good place because it's on a table, so once it starts getting too long, then there's the potential for these to get broken off by the grandkids or even by myself. So, all right, I think well, that's I think that's it. I don't want to cut too much off of her because she's she's just so absolutely beautiful, isn't she? All right, we're gonna set her aside. And I'm going to poke some holes and stick her in, and she'll be done. And like I said, I have a couple behind me rooting in water. I'll, I'll stick those in later. And remember, folks, when you're 
when you're cutting up things like this, you don't you want to get those bottom leaves off of the stem. And I know on some plants that's it breaks your heart to do it, but if you don't, you're just going to end up with trouble because it attracts um, bugs, fungus gnats, and because the leaves start to decay, and that's what they like. So you want to make sure and get those off. Okay. I'll be anxious to see what this does. And do I still not have you in the screen? <laughs> yeah. I did clean these off with with my alcohol spray, my tools. I probably should tell you that I should clarify when I say the leaves not hitting the soil because sometimes we want to propagate that way and you can do that but keep in mind you're, you're hopefully keeping a close eye on it and by that I mean When you plant succulents, you plant half the leaf down in the soil, right? So, but that's a different method and it's a different plant. And these plants you can actually take and wind them around the top of the soil and wherever there's a node, you'll get new roots. So that would be another exception. But again, you're keeping a, a close eye on it, then. So if it does, if a leaf starts to rot, you pull that off right away. Even when you're um, when you're propagating, right? You you want to pull that off of there right away. Okay. Well, I sure hope this works. She's turned out to be a quite a a slow grower for me, so I'm. stick this whole piece in here. I'm hoping I can just leave it in this um, in her new home here for a long long time. It seems like all I've been doing is repotting lately. And I, don't get me wrong, I love, I love to repot, I love to play in the dirt, as you know, but sometimes it gets overwhelming when you have a lot of plants that all of a sudden need to be repotted and you don't have the time to do it, um, or you're not able to for one reason or another, <clears throat> that can be tiring so okay already making my mess here well I guess I probably should go get that other piece before I put that back in here yeah but it's 
right behind me. So. I walked back there to get it before I started filming. And I, I found, I came across something. And I got distracted. And I took care of the other thing. And totally forgot to get my these. Okay. So now we have these. And I picked this piece up off the floor too. So Okay. Alright. I don't know. I don't know if those long ones are going to fit in here. I'm, I'm afraid they might not. There's a lot of roots there. And these are really long already. Mm -hmm. What to do? Let's make them fit, huh? Let's just make them fit. I think if I just... squish the soil up here a little bit, maybe. I got them in there. <sighs> I don't know if I ever gave you guys the recipe for my my hummingbird feeder. We stopped buying the hummingbird food from the store. And I made my own. And I got the recipe from somewhere a long, long time ago. It was a, I think it was a hummingbird expert guy. Anyway, it's one part sugar to four parts water. So if you put in a quarter cup of sugar, it's one cup of water. Okay, so quarter cup of sugar to one cup of water. Now my hummingbird feeder is a little bigger, so I make two batches at a time. So I put in a half a cup of sugar with two cups of water. And make sure it dissolves really good. You want to make sure that sugar is dissolved. Don't put it outside if it's not, because you'll, you'll end up having issues. Um, but yeah, that's the recipe. Very simple, and they love it. We've actually gotten a couple new hummingbirds since I've been using that, that method. So one quarter cup sugar. Just regular granulated sugar, white sugar, to uh, one cup of water. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? Instead of trying to feed this back through, I'm just going to stick all this in here and let it find its own way. 
because I know it will. Oh, and by the way, I did get my computer fixed. Thank goodness. If you, if you live in Wisconsin and you ever have a computer problem, um, get in touch with me via email, Linda's will glance for you at gmail.com or Instagram, same name, and I will get his contact information to you. He, his name is Tom Caracas, and he's, he's the owner and uh, whatever of Alpha Geeks. And he's actually in uh, South Milwaukee or Cudahy in Wisconsin. And he will work remotely. So that's the best part. I just give him control of my computer. He goes in, he fixes it all, and and I'm good to go. And he's trustworthy. I don't. I have no no issues about letting him do that. <clears throat> he's been in business for many years. He used to. We used to be in the same business networking group for many many years. And so he's. I know him. So he got it all fixed. And believe it or not, the thing. What happened is. I went to download a video one day and it wouldn't let me. It said my disk space was all used up. I was like, what? Because I'm not a big computer person, you know. I don't, I don't sit on the computer. I don't play games. I don't, I don't do any of that. So I couldn't figure out what it was. And then we found it. It was my YouTube videos. It took, it took up 918 whatever uh, kick, kick, uh, um not megabytes, the other one, the higher one. Anyways, it, it took up almost the whole disk. This little tiny sliver was left. So he asked me if I wanted to, re to get rid of those, and I said, well, no, those are my YouTube videos. But then I remembered YouTube keeps a copy of them as well. They're in my YouTube account. And really, how often do I go back to my old videos? Not not too often. So I said, you know what? I don't want to have to purchase extra external drives and all that stuff. So, yep, let's just do it. And you know what? He, he erased those <laughs> videos, and I have almost a brand new computer. That's how much I got rid of. So I was thrilled when I found that out because I did not want to have to buy a new computer. And mine is not, you know, it's, it's eight years old, which... I know to some people in the computer world that's old, but it's not old for me. I keep things forever. All right, well let's do let's let's get this out of the way now. And I had to really look at this because I didn't. She almost looked like a snow queen to me. And I did some research, and what I found, well, I should say on one of the sites that I found, this lady said that. The Snow Queen is is just a um like a hybrid of the Marble Queen. She said they're the same plant. The only difference is they breed the whitest leaves from the Marble Queen to get the Snow Queen. And at first I thought, oh, okay. But then after I thought about it for a while, I thought, well, yeah, but how do you know you're not going to go back and they're not going to revert back to green? I don't know. So if anybody knows the um, answer to that or if anybody can add anything to that, what we already heard, feel free to leave that in the comments section because I'm really curious because they're so, so close. And that does seem to be the only difference. Um, is that the Marble Queen has more green than the Snow Queen. Now this has roots coming out the bottom. This thing is was really ripped on in there. That's how fast this grew. In fact, this pot... Mm, I don't know if this is going to be big enough. Mm. And I am using the same soil because it's brand new. I just I just repotted it. Like I said, it, it's only been in there two weeks or so. Maybe three. 
Wow. Look at that, folks. That's all on solid roots. But I think she can still go in here. Yeah. I'm going to put her in here for today because I have other things I have to do and I do not want to get up again and have to look for another pot. So we're just going to work with what we got here for now. It's, it is bigger, you know, it's bigger than the one it was in, as you can see. So, but obviously, it's going to need to be repotted soon. Okay. A little more out of there. Okay. Normally I would take the time to try to loosen or tease the roots as they say a little bit, but I think I'm going to be repotting this in the very near future anyway, so I'm not going to bother. I just wanted to get her out of that candle holder before I couldn't get her out. I was panicking. It's like, oh no, how am I going to get those leaves out of there? And then my husband said, how are you going to get those leaves out of there? I said, very, very carefully. And I don't think I damaged any. I think I, I kind of rolled them up and folded them up and shoved them through. And I think, I think they're going to be okay. But pothos is a hardy plant. It's pretty hard to kill. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Give her a little drink. And while she's sipping that up, I wanna talk I wanna show you this. And we're not gonna pot this today. I'm gonna I'm gonna poke holes and stick her back in with the mother plant. But I want to make a bigger, fuller pot of this. I got a cutting of this from a friend of mine quite a while ago, year, year and a half maybe, and I got it. it. It didn't do anything for the longest time, and then all of a sudden it took off. And so she's growing pretty nicely, but I see other ones that are like three times the size of hers in half the time. So I don't, I, I've moved her a few times to see if maybe the Lighting wasn't quite right. Well, I think I finally found her sweet spot as far as lighting. Um, <clears throat> but she's she's only got a couple stems coming out. She's fuller on top, but I want to get her more full in the pot. And somebody told me a long time ago that you cannot root these in water. And, I, you know, I questioned that when I heard it. But I guess I didn't question it enough to, for it to make a difference. I just thought... Oh, one of these days I gotta get this I gotta take some cuttings and stick them back in the soil and then one day I just thought you know what I'm gonna just try it because since when do I listen to anybody when it comes to stuff that I think might work I still have to try it's just that's just in me I don't know what it is but my husband used to say all the time then how did he put that <coughs> Some of the greatest things I, in life that I accomplished was because somebody said it couldn't be done. <coughs> and I'm quite sure that that's a famous quote by someone, but I don't know. Who. Um, but I kind of adopted it for my own motto because I'm, I'm kind of that way myself. If I don't understand why it won't work, I have to try it. Oh, here we go. Okay, sorry about that. I got a lot of that going on these last couple of days, so not sure what that's all about. But <clears throat> um, okay, so yep, couldn't put these in water, but look, 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 you guys. 
look at the roots on these. They're at least an inch, some of them two inches long. I mean, who said you couldn't root these in water? And, by the way, this is about not even two weeks worth of growth. That was the amazing part. Not even two weeks ago, I stuck these in this glass, and I set them on the table in my south window with a little rooting powder, and I haven't added any water or anything to it. This is just the way it was. And, voila. So, <clears throat> when I get done here, I'm going to be sticking those in the pot with the mother plant. But I just wanted to show you that. And I'm sure there's many of you out there that are saying, well, I don't know who told you that. I root them in water all the time. But that's that's the deal. So, okay. I'm going to get this one out of the way. And last but definitely not least, as you all know, I don't know why I have these two pots here. I did that for a reason, but... Okay. You remember my purple passion? Purple velvet. It was huge. It took up a whole window. And I had it in my east window of my laundry room. And then something attacked it. I didn't know what it was. I'm pretty sure it was the thrips issue that I was dealing with with all of my other plants. But I didn't know that at the time. I didn't see any signs of thrips or any other insects for that matter. But my leaves were curling curling up and, and they wouldn't open. And even after I treated it, they weren't opening. So I cut it all back and I repotted it and I treated it. I treated the soil. I put some uh, systemic granules in there just to make sure that if I missed one tiny little egg that it was gonna, if it hatched, it wasn't going anywhere. And look at her now. And this is, it's been about a year. But look at, I mean, look at the size of this leaf. She's as big as my hand. Hopefully you can see that. So she's healthier than ever. Um, and I have a separate pot over there, a smaller one, that's also from this plant. So, <clears throat> I am going to repot this. I need to hang this because where I have her, we are running out of room. So I want to repot her and I want to hang her. And I'm going to do that right now. This used to be a very common plant years ago. And then I didn't see it for a long time. And then all of a sudden one day, something on here that I don't. No, just per light. Oh an old piece of orchid bark. Whew. 
Yeah, I quit using that. There still are some very, very tiny pieces of that in the soil when I buy it, but they're so minuscule, I don't worry about it too much. But I no longer add orchid bark to my plants. <clears throat> because they attract bugs. Let me rephrase that. In my home, in my experience, that is what happened. I know there's a lot of people that use orchid bark. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying I don't anymore. If I find it in a pot that I didn't get repotted during that time, I take it out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to get another handful of that out of there and discard that because this could really actually go into a, the next size up. It could go into a bigger pot, bigger than this. But I don't have a bigger pot that is a hanging pot. And this pot I'm using right now, I absolutely love these because they have trays on the bottom. I would I would give anything to find some more of these. I don't know. I don't know if they're if I don't think there's any place that sells them. They came in with a plant in it from it was either Lowe's, I think it was. Or was it Stein's? No, it was Stein's Garden Center. But I think Lowe's might have had them too. I'm not sure. But they work great. And they're not bad to look at, you know, some hanging pots to me are, they just don't have any personality, I guess, that's how you'd put it, I, I'm not into modern contemporary style, so, I like the old fashioned look, and I think this has that. grandson, great grandson, was here this weekend, and whew, was he full of energy this time. Every once in a while he gets like that. And I said to his mom, you didn't give him candy before you came, did you? No, Grandma. He's like that 24-7. I said, oh boy. That would wear me out. <laughs> it did It did wear me out the little bit of time. We had him overnight, and she picked him up about 1 o'clock. And, and me and me and her, me and his papa were so worn out by the time he left, we needed a nap. He's a sweet boy. He's a good boy. And he wants to do everything papa does. But every so often, he'll be, he'll come over, and he'll be so... Ugh. I, the word hyper comes to mind, but I hate to use that term because it, it has a connotation of being bratty and sassy. And that it was not, that's not him at all. He's a very, very good kid, and he's a good helper. He just, he just was so full, he was just so full of energy. sure do love them. You know, they, I saw a t-shirt one time that said, if I would have known grandkids were this much fun, I would have skipped having kids. And boy, if that isn't the truth. Sorry, Trisha. <laughs> you know I'm kidding, right? 
But grandkids are, are so much fun. They really truly are. I'm getting dirt all over the floor. Okay. Here we go. One of the things I want to do here is cut this back a little bit because they're getting a little long in between the leaves and we all know I don't like that. So we're going to start that right here, I think. I'm going to cut those back. First, I'm going to clean off my scissors, my, my snippers. <clears throat> Hmm. Or do I? Yes. I do. I need to do it. I just need to do it. Okay, right above the leaf. And I'm going to take this bottom leaf off. And as much as I love this cascading part here, I really truly want to make this fuller, so that's what I'm going to do. That was my whole intention in the first place. So once again, we're going to snip right above the leaf. And new ones will grow out. They will branch out right there. So that's my other reason for hesitation, because then they'll all be being fed by this one stem. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it's, it can be troublesome. Now, <clears throat> the next note is right here, so I'm going to cut down here because we don't need any of that. It's just wasted. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pin this down with one of my clips. So I'm going to put that like that and turn it. And we're going to put this in this side instead. Well, I almost think I should cut that one too. I'm going to cut this one too. I'm going to get her nice and full again. And you can root these in water or soil, folks, either way. And someone mentioned that in one of my videos recently about the you know, making the hole and rooting in water. So I thought I would bring that up too. You, you, when you, when you root something in water, your water roots are not the same as your soil roots. And that I got, that's first-hand knowledge from a, a horticulturalist, a botanist, that I learned many years ago. So that's not just some information that I'm, 
um, you know, telling you from experience or that I heard. This is this is actual scientific fact from from what I can tell because I trusted her. She was teaching, and I tr trusted her knowledge. So um, the roots are different from the water to the soil. So you can root things in water, but you have to be careful when you move them into soil. Um, number one, you got to make sure you keep them good and moist, not not soaking in you know sopping wet soil, but keep them good and moist because they're used to being wet. So if you put them from the water into the soil and they dry out, you could lose them. The other thing is their their makeup is different. Their um, their cell cellular makeup is different. So you have to give them time. It takes them a little time to acclimate from the water to the soil. And very often I'll see uh, the, the transition period, the cutting will look like it's half dead or like it's dying or died and, and it didn't. So if that happens to you, just give it a little time and I'm pretty sure it will, it will perk up for you. I can't guarantee it because I'm not sure if that's what the problem is, but I'm pretty sure it will. So just um, just be patient then, okay? If you do that, I'm gonna stick this little guy in there too. What the heck? Why not? Uh, the other thing we talked about is making sure that you make a hole first before you stick your, because if you damage, this is where the plant takes up the water. If you damage that, there is a possibility it will not take up water. So it's always best to make a hole first. It's not absolutely necessary, and it doesn't always happen where the plant won't come back or won't be okay. Sometimes it is. But if you're going to go through all the trouble of repotting and taking those cuttings, why not take that extra step and make the hole and make it easy for that that stem to to soak up the, the moisture once it's in its new in its soil. Okay, that's going to be it for this. I am going to I think I'm going to pin this down. I'll have to decide after I clean up all the mess around it. So I'm going to clean this up, folks, and then I'm going to, uh, then I'll be back with the final product and show you what it all looks like, okay? All right. And there they are, all ready to go back in their homes. Not much to see in there yet, but it'll be pretty once they start climbing out of there. My beautiful purple passion. Purple velvet. So pretty. All right, my friends. That'll be it for today. Hope you had all had a wonderful Labor Day weekend and all got home safe and are all doing well. And I will be back. Bye now.